Slow to speak. Quick to listen. Slow to rap. What is James talking about when he brings us to that scripture? James 1 and 19. As I said earlier, it is the voice of God that produces movement in the earth realm so that we can see where we need to go. Your sight should never precede your hearing. Amen. You should never see something and then listen for it later. You should always listen first so that your sight can be fortified and your sight can be validated. In other words, what I'm seeing is true because I heard it and I communed with it and I understood its tendencies and I understood its purpose. I understood its motive because I listened. What did your elementary school teacher tell you? Boy, you better listen to the text. Listen to what I'm saying in the classroom. Ray, the reason why we get in so much trouble and we put so much calamity in our lives is because we are not slow to speak. Chris, we're not slow to speak. We're quick to speak because we always want to talk about what we see. Yes, we do want to talk about what we hear, but nine times out of ten, if it is not lining up, with anything in the earth room in terms of what you see, then it ain't God. Lining up with what I see in the earth realm, I have better be trying to hear it first. Even the great meditative practices of the Zen and the Buddhist and the Hindu religion will tell you that they don't use much of their sight if at all when they're in their meditative state. The prophet always heard with these in the natural and saw with these in the spirit. Why don't we listen to ourselves enough To keep us out of trouble. You know that little voice that you, you hear when you drive down the street and you want to go do something and that's something. No, 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 no. You, you, you remember that, Ray? No, 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 no. Or maybe I shouldn't do that. Maybe I shouldn't cut that man off. Maybe I shouldn't run him over. Maybe I shouldn't. I don't know. But watch this. If you've had a bad day, if you've had a bad week, guarantee that the spirit of the enemy is going to try you on your faculties and the faculties, rather, in the spirit to see if you are quiet, if you are all together, if you are patient, if you don't react out of the flesh realm. Look at uh, President Obama for just a second. There's been a, there have been a lot of presidents that have graced the White House approximately 44, 45. But by far, and I've studied a couple of them, this guy is the coolest. I think in his two terms, well, one and a half terms, well, not even one and a half, his one term He's probably been rattled by 
Republicans, people in his own party, naysayers, probably what, twice? It is because before he puts his hand to do something, Ray, that he really wants to do, he thinks about the consequences. He thinks about who he's representing. Not only his uh, wife, Michelle, and the two kids and the dog, but he's representing the Democratic Party, and he's representing the United States of America, the greatest nation on the planet. So you ask me, why is it that we must be slow to speak? It is because we are representing somebody. Ray, who do you think we're representing? We're representing Christ Jesus. So knowing that in the flesh lieth no good thing, the Bible tells us that in the spirit lies heavenly things, great things, but in order for us to attain it, we must settle ourselves. Be slow to speak. Now watch this. Here it comes. Why would James say be slow to speak if there was nothing to talk about in the first place? <laughs> oh my God, I like that. Think about it. He said, wait, don't, don't, don't say that. Be slow to speak. And when you're slow to speak, these things on the side of your head take over. And if you hearken to them, while you're hearkening to them, the Spirit of the Lord comes in and begins to deal with what you are hearing. And when God deals with what you're hearing, then your wrath is settled. The reason why James said that is because there is there are things on the outside of us that will cause us to come out of character and not represent God. Be slow to speak. Ray, he, he that have an ear. I, I, I implore you on this week. Get quiet. I got tested too uh, a week and a half ago. Took uh, took me down. Yes, the, the, the prophet, the pastor. Me, me, me. Took me down, Chris. I was about to just go off. Like black out. Yes. But the more I thought about the consequences of what would happen if I did that, the more I begin to just say, okay, hey, is it worth feeding my spirit, or excuse me, my flesh, to react in the way that my flesh wants me to? Or is it better for me to cool it and to catch it? And because the Bible even says, catch every thought and hold it captive. Once you catch the thought, you have a chance to hear what God is saying about the thought to you. You shouldn't do that. Or no. Or let's try something else. You know how your therapist does. <laughs> For those of you who have one. Chris, why don't we do it? Why? He that have an ear. Let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the, to, to the church. What's the church? Us. We're the church. How do I know? Because Jesus is coming back for who? Us, his church, his bride. He's a bridegroom. Am I right about it? Am I right? Yeah, he's a bridegroom. So he to have an ear, let him hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. Be slow to speak, quick to listen, and slow to rise. So it's actually telling you one plus one is two. Slow to speak. If you're slow to speak, Huh? Quick to listen. So the rat. So that which quickens you should be your hearing. Stop being so impulsive. Why do you have to have, you know I correct people about twice, two, three times a week. Chris and I tell them, I say, 
They say, well, I need to go. No, you don't need to go anywhere. Think about it. You, you don't really need that. I need to go. No, you don't really need to. Think about it. Think about it. Do you need to or do you want to? Nothing wrong with wants. But God wants to refine us in the, 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 the needs. God needs us to listen more before we react on what we see and what we want to do. Amen? I'm going to read a little bit more and then we'll finish this up. Verse 22, but he, excuse me, but be doers of the word and not mere hearers who deceive themselves. For if any are he uh, hearers of the word and not doers, they are like those who look at themselves in a mirror. For they look at themselves and on going away immediately forget what they were like. <laughs> but for those who look into the perfect law, the law of liberty, and persevere, being not hearers who forget, but doers who act, they will be blessed in all they're doing. So what are you saying, man of God? What I'm saying in closing is, In the Old Covenant, you had the temple or the uh, ark, the, 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 the tent of meeting, the tabernacle rather. And in the tabernacle were artifacts. One of the artifacts that I want to flesh out tonight was the brazen laver. And the brazen laver served a lot of purposes, not only washing and things of that nature, but it served as a reflection. It was made out of gold, but it was polished to a point where it is you can see your reflection. <laughs> Hallelujah. God told the children of Israel under the command of Moses to make the uh, tabernacle and the artifacts. But in the artifacts, the brazen laver was made as God had instructed so that before, watch this, you go to present yourself to God's representative, the priest or the high priest, that you beheld yourself in the mirror. You looked at yourself before you presented yourself. Oh God. <laughs> and whenever you look at yourself before you present yourself, then you can't tell me that something doesn't hear. You don't hear something. Don't you always hear something when you look at yourself in the mirror in the morning? I'm the only one raising my hand. Ray, don't you? Don't I mean, every day. And when I'm brushing my teeth, I'm like, God knows my th I need to brush my teeth harder next time. Something. Oh, man, I need to go warm the car up. Oh, God, I need to go and help somebody shovel out their car out the snow. Something. You, you, when, you, when, when you behold yourself, when you look at yourself, oh, I look good or I look bad. When you behold yourself, yourself talks to yourself. So what God did was that before they went any further into the uh, the tabernacle, they said, wait, wait stop here, uh, do your ceremonial washing, and I want you to look inside of the brazen altar and look at your reflection. I want you to behold yourself before you go a step further. 
Ray God trying to bring us to another level, but he wants us to look at ourselves first. And once we look at ourselves before we move in what we see, because the priests, they saw the Holy of Holies for us. I believe that the brazen altar was in the inner court. Because we have the outer court, the inner court, and the Holy of Holies. So they saw the, 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 the Holy of Holies, they saw it. But they said before, but God said, before you go further, I need you to take a look at your reflection in the brazen altar. Oh, God, here it comes. I've been waiting all night for this. Watch this. The brazen altar was also an altar of sacrifice. <laughs> so when you look at your reflection, Chris, you are actually, before you go further, you are actually sacrificing who you think you are. You are sacrificing what you see in the mirror. And when you sacrifice, you confess. And when you confess, you leave it at the altar so you can move into the glory of God in his presence. My God. To the Holy of Holies. Woo! Yeah. It's like beholding yourself in the mirror. That's what the scripture says. Mirror, mirror. On the wall. You've heard it before. Who is the fairest of them all? Who was that? The evil witch. Snow White. Seven dwarfs. Tell me why. Why did not she ask all the townspeople? Why didn't she ask her mother, her father, her kids if she had any, her, her court jester and, her, and the chamberlains and the court subjects and her servants? Why didn't she ask them? She had to ask the mirror. Because the mirror was the only thing that could give her the exact reflection of who she really was. She heard. And when she heard, she saw. And anything that the mirror told her, she believed it. Because she heard what the mirror said, and the mirror reflected back to her sight. And then she moved in whatever she saw. Oh, my God. When is the last time you talked to yourself? in the mirror and say, am I going to make it? Is there doom around the corner? Is there doom and gloom in my life for today? God said, if you're slow to speak and if you're quick to listen, then I'll pull you out of all the wrath that lays in wait for you because when you hear my voice, I'll direct your path. Proverbs 3rd chapter. Acknowledge me in all your ways. Oh God. Oh, oh We want to be superstars. We want to be Kobe. We want to be Mr. Tom Brady. Mr. Ray Lewis. Mr. Joe Flacco just got signed the contract. They called him a subpar quarterback, but now he's ball of status now, making millions, and people are hating on him. But what are you really looking at? Are you looking at what they got or are you listening to the things that they have to go through to attain what they have? Hallelujah. We're not listening, Mr. Chris. We're not looking at the brazen lava. We're not looking at our real self. So I dare you next time you go into the mirror, which should be tomorrow morning or even tonight if you that vain, and you ask yourself, mirror, mirror on the wall. Who is God in my life? 